Oh, yes. Love that rendition, Kim. Thank you. Thank you, Kim, Bell. Uh, give them some more love. So it is October, which here at Ahava we call Rocktober. Hey, one person remembered. We call it what? Rocktober. That's right. And we are rocking this idea of abundance and prosperity in our lives. So this is the month where we get to focus on prosperity and really get clear on what it means, what it is, as the reading said, like, what is money? And get in right relationship with that in all areas of our lives. So today, the topic is the money enigma. Ooh. So we're going to get a little clear on this mystery of this thing that people have so many different ideas about and how we can get in right relationship with it. If you look back at the Latin root of the word prosperity, it literally means according to hope or to go forward hopefully. So when we look at this idea of prosperity, it isn't so much a condition like having money, but it's more of a way of living, a mindset of having a hopeful attitude. And with this in mind, prosperity then becomes not something that you need to get or acquire. Instead, it's a lifestyle. It's a particular way of thinking and living in alignment with the flow and trusting the universal substance of life. And it's a way of living that pulls us forward with hope. Now, when I say hope, again, I want to get clear because I'm not talking about hope in a way of like wanting something, like I hope this is going to happen, right? Because wanting isn't having. And we live in a state where abundance, a state of being, of abundance all around. So to live from this hopeful expectancy simply means to turn, tune our minds, our, our mind's eye and our awareness to see the abundance and the abundant nature of life all around. The literal definition of hope is to cherish a desire with anticipation. The old English word hopian refers to a positive expectation. So it's important to get clear and all on the same page of what we mean when we're using certain words, and especially in the context of this month when there is so much baggage, so many different mixed messages about prosperity and money in the world. And so we're going to get clear from a spiritual understanding just exactly what prosperity is. So we can hone our energy and our focus and our intention to that of living, of vibrating with the very truth of the abundant nature of the universe. So in order to experience this bountiful life, our theme, right, bountiful living, and to live a prosperous life, we're not just talking about with our finances, but also a prosperous life in our health and vitality, in our relationships, our career, our creative expression, deep and meaningful relationships with ourself, that relationship with the divine of our own being. In order to experience this bountiful living, a prosperous life, we have to be willing to look at what are some of those beliefs that no longer serve us. And the truth is, abundance just is. Abundance is who we are. It's not something outside of ourselves to get. It is our natural state. Abundance is our 
birthright. And as quantum physics say, there is this field, right, of unlimited, infinite potential. And so if we truly live in a universe where there is infinite potential, scientists are telling us this and are beginning to prove this in ways that the mystics have known for centuries, that everything we experience is actually simply kind of more like this holographic experience of a reflection of something within ourselves. Right, that there, there is this field of pure potentiality in which we live and move and experience life. And until there is a pattern that is created and energized with focused thought and attention, it just lives as infinite potential until it is focused into a specific form. And then, as quantum science would tell us, it collapses into something specific. I'm not an expert in quantum science, so I hope I'm doing it enough justice, but you get the idea, right? Because this, what we've been saying uh, uh, in a spiritual context for many years is that we live in an infinite universe. And it's fun to see now how science is beginning to catch up and show, improve ways that our experience is actually demonstration of our thoughts and where we live in our mind and energize our thoughts that become our beliefs, which then shape our experience and mold our experience through our thoughts and beliefs. So knowing this is where our power lives. We talked about that last Sunday, right? What is your greatest asset? Not your bank account. Your greatest asset is your power to choose, your ability to focus your thoughts and to energize those which align with the truth and the essence of life, which are an expression of the truth of the universe. So when we get in alignment with that, with the abundance of life, with the freedom, with the creativity, with this experience of life that is all around us, when we begin to hone our thoughts and beliefs in alignment with that truth, what we experience in form is a reflection of that. We are always creating in the invisible realm, in our consciousness first. And then our consciousness creates our perception of reality. We each have our own worldview or a primary set of beliefs about how the universe works, why life gets to be the way it is. And every aspect of our life reflects this. So our relationship with money also is a place that we can provide more clarity and intention around in our own mind. Because our beliefs about money, our relationship with money, also kind of lives on the spectrum of beliefs, both individually and collectively, right? We see it, that sometimes we are more in the world of scarcity, and then sometimes we might lean more towards the divine reality of abundance and wholeness and sufficiency. And personally, I don't know about you, but for me, right, we can kind of jump along the spectrum of beliefs at many times during the day, especially if we are not mindful and aware of where we allow our attention to go. And the world around us, especially with the culture of this, some may say, late-stage capitalism, with the consumerism, all of this in our world is based on scarcity or 
is it scare city? So when you're living in scare city, you're in this constant state of anxiety and fear that there's not enough, yes? And from this perspective, it leads to withholding, constricting, hoarding, because we're afraid that this might be our last crumb, our last little bit. So we have to hold on to it in scarcity. And from this perspective, this belief in scarcity not only constricts this flow of money, it can also lead to constricting other resources such as our time, our talents, our love, our patience. The belief in scarcity, that there is uh, limited resources or not enough for everyone, is the root of so much conflict, individually and collectively, yes. But what we know is that scarcity is a false reality. It's a lie that we've collectively bought into as a society. So we can break free from this lie, from this false reality, by taking our power back and remembering that we have agency and we have choice. We can choose where to align our intention, where to place our attention. We get to choose the thoughts that we want to focus on. And we get to choose the information that we allow into our conscious awareness. It's like on the internet, you know, you can create different filters. Those of you who may know, work with children and have children, like you can create different parameters, like parental guidelines that will not allow certain content to come through. So maybe it's time for us to add some of those parameters in our own mind and not allow those of scarcity to even enter into our field of awareness. One way we can do this is by just noticing the content. What, is, uh, what are we choosing to watch? What are we listening to on the radio or the songs? What are we choosing to read? What are the conversations we are having with one another? Are we buying into this collective story of not enough? Awareness is key. And it's time that we take our power back and affirm the truth of the infinite nature of the universe. Karen Russo, a friend of ours and another CSL minister, has a wonderful book called The Money Keys, which we studied a couple of years ago. And she says, when you act from scarcity, you serve the idea of lack. You organize your decisions and choices in a way to maximize your good while someone else goes without. Someone who is fearful may be able to generate money, but no amount of money will ever really address the challenge of scarcity. Fear is a faith issue, not a financial one. Whew, ding, 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 ding to that, right? So our work in transforming our consciousness and our beliefs and our ideas around money and finances is really based in faith and how we transcend a consciousness of lack and limitation and fear and not enoughness of whatever it may be, not enough time, not enough money, not enough energy, is through faith and a belief that we live in a universe that is for us, that is always supporting us. And so when we choose to believe in this infinite universal presence that always has our back, we begin to serve a reality of wholeness and oneness and abundance instead of residing in scare city or this attitude of 
me and mine. The universal principle of the law of unity states that all of life is connected and created from one infinite eternal source. So when we practice affirming this truth that there is one source, one life energy, the source and substance of all things, we move into the realization that this too must include us, yes? Dr. Ernest Holmes is the founder of the Science of Mind teaching, which is the predominant teaching that we are based on uh, here at Ahava. And Dr. Holmes, this is one of my favorite quotes, y'all. He says, I cannot be deprived of my supply. The trees do not lack for leaves, nor do the flowers fail to bloom. Am I not as important as they? So whenever I start to feel that scarcity, lack, fear, doubt, I turn to nature and I look at the abundance and the ease at which the flowers bloom, the trees began to naturally know that it's time to transform and to let go and they don't resist the letting go of their leaves. They simply let go. And when I turn to nature and I see this demonstrated so beautifully, I can remind myself as what Holmes says that am I too not as important as they? So we as humans have been given this amazing ability to think and to make decision based on free will. And sometimes we get in our own way. This gift can be a hindrance if we are not mindful and paying attention enough to keep our mind right and focus on this truth that the universe always has our back. And we, too, are just as important, just as loved, and innately know what it is we need to do in each and every moment to open to this flow of good. So this is where it is important to begin to get into right relationship with money and begin to explore some of those beliefs that may be holding us back from experiencing the infinite life of source of good that is always there and available to us because of our own mind, mindset, or thoughts. And next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about this balance between giving and receiving and reciprocity and circulation and flow. But today, to build that foundation, we must first get clear on, is there something in our own mind that we are still believing about money that no longer serves us? And as we begin to build this relationship with money, it's like nurturing a friendship, right? You invest your time and effort into building trust with a friend. We have the opportunity to do the same thing with our finances. And not just about hoarding or thinking of it as an enemy or some enigma that we can never quite figure out or understand or just think, ah, I'm not good with money, right? I just don't even want to deal with that. All of these beliefs begin to show up and outpicture in our experience. So when we start to get intentional and notice about the things we think about in relationship to money and finances and flow, we can wake up to where there's perhaps an opportunity to shift or let go of something. So I want you now just to take a moment and to think about what are some of your earliest memories you had regarding money. 
perhaps you were brought up hearing money doesn't grow on trees, or you need to save for a rainy day. Money is the root of all evil. It's rude to talk about money. Right? What are some phrases or ideas? Just go ahead and shout it out. What are some th ideas you've heard or had, perhaps from a child or even today, that you hear about money? Work hard. You got to work hard for the money. I mean, so many songs, right? <laughs> That's a good source of looking at what we think uh, as a reflection of our collective consciousness and beliefs about money is our music, right? What do we sing about? Anything else? Money doesn't bring happiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... I invite you to continue to reflect on some of these ideas and to go back and, and perhaps think of some things that you have heard as a child or maybe you find yourself saying out of just habit and then if you're like, wait a minute, is that true? Do, is that really something I want to say or believe in? Because these, imp these phrases influence our perception of money and wealth as well as our relationship with giving and receiving. So once we become aware about these ideas of money, we can begin to deconstruct them. And we can notice the ideas that no longer serve us and instead choose a more conscious and intentional place that we desire to be in relationship with money. Yes? This afternoon, we are holding a book study. It's open for all. Drop in on the Money Enigma chapter in our book of the month, The Spiritual Economics. And we're going to have an opportunity to talk more about some of these beliefs about what we think about money, what we've heard about money, and begin to see how we can consciously create a relationship with money and finances that works for us and works for all, yes? So I want to end by sharing some of the statements that Eric Betterworth in this spiritual economic book reminds us as uh, ways to redefine money. He often says money is a symbol. Money is a symbol of abundance. Money is a symbol of God's substance. Money is the divine in action. Money is energy. Money is a tangible representation of an intangible universal substance. So take these Find your own, find what works. But the practice this week is as you begin to notice what you say about money, if somebody, if something comes up and you notice yourself saying like, oh, we're not getting that today, we don't have enough money. Or what did you get for this? Oh, well, I only, I only make this. Why the only, right? What are these ways that we maybe discount ourselves and our flow? So as we... Do our work this week to notice what we're saying, what we're thinking, what we're believing, what we're engaging in, what we're hearing about money. That's the first step, notice. Second step is then to ask, is it true? Is that something we really want to believe? Is that something we would want our future generations to believe? And if not, remember that we are at choice, our greatest asset. And we can choose to replace that thought or idea with the truth. Affirming money is a symbol of abundance. Money is divine in action. Money is energy. Money is a tangible representation of an intangible universal substance. Money is a symbol of God's substance. Find what works for you and notice what begins to shift in your life as you replace those old ideas with those that align and vibrate and resonate with the universal truth of pure abundance. Yes? Are you willing to do that little experiment this week? 
Okay, good, because that's what it's all about, actually doing it, not just coming and feeling good about it, but actually practicing it. That's where we get to shift in our lives. So let us take that into now prayer. Taking a deep breath. (sighs) So grateful to recognize the one life that is pure abundance. So grateful to place our awareness and attention on this pure substance of life itself. Knowing and recognizing the infinite, ever-expanding, ever-growing nature of life itself. I know that God is love. God is wholeness. Spirit is abundance. And as I know this truth for the one, I know this must absolutely be true for me. For each and every person hearing the sound of my voice, for there truly is only one. And therefore, I know and claim and speak this word, knowing that abundance is my birthright. We live in an infinite field of pure potentiality. And how good it is that I get to participate in this bounty that I get to allow spirit to know itself more fully by expressing through me as pure abundance in form. So what I know is that as I choose to place my awareness and attention on the infinite nature of good, as I reflect on the vast cosmos as I reflect on the infinite grains of sand, I know that I too am a part of this infinite universe. And therefore all that I need and desire is available to me through me. As I choose this day to claim my divine inheritance and say yes, to the flow of life as abundance moving through me now. Knowing that spirit is the source and substance of all supply, I accept my good. I am so grateful. I am so grateful to know that I live in an infinite universe of good. I am so grateful to know that I am always at choice. And I choose this day to recognize the pure abundance of life itself expressing through me. So with great gratitude for the fulfillment of this word, I release it now into the action of the law that always says, yes, my beloved, it is done. It is so. I affirm it and I let it be so. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is.